Now time for our weekly political segment, Texas Face Off. Joining me this morning is Ed Espinoza, Executive Director of Progress Texas. Good to be here. Good to have you with us. And Matt Makowiak, who is the chair of the Travis County Republican Party. So thank you guys both for being here. Obviously, the big thing everyone's talking about this week is Houston and the Democratic debate uh, for these presidential candidates. Ed, let's start with you. Tell me a little bit about what you will be watching. So. First and foremost, I'm glad that it's only one night and it's down to 10 candidates, which is still too many candidates. But uh, I think because of that, you're going to have a chance for a more substantive conversation. Definitely guns. That's going to be on the agenda. At least it should be on the agenda. The other thing I think it's going to come up is foreign policy. You've seen a lot of foreign policy stories this week having to do with you know, espionage and, and things like that in the news. And I, that, that's something that I think we haven't heard much of in these debates. It's a chance for Democrats to show their foreign policy credentials. Also, a lot of other issues, health care, public education, Progressive issues are mainstream issues. We have a chance to demonstrate that yet again in some of these debates. That's the, those are some of the things we'll be looking for. Matt, you also, though a Republican, going to be watching these debates. What are you going to be looking for? Well, this you know, Democratic primary appears to be really coming down to Biden and Warren at this point. Um, they're pr pretty clearly in first and second place. And so it would be interesting to see whether those two candidates mix it up at all directly. Uh, Elizabeth Warren has remained pretty positive uh, with her message so far in the campaign. Um, it'll also just be interesting to see whether maybe Bernie Sanders goes after Elizabeth Warren. So they're competing for the same vote. Whether someone like Pete Buttigieg goes after Joe Biden, they're competing perhaps for some of the same votes. So I do think the issues will be interesting as well. I mean, this, the border security issues are more profound in Texas. We'll be interested to see whether those come up. Uh, certainly guns uh, in, in wake of Odessa and El Paso uh, could be uh, an, an, you know, an interesting aspect. And I guess the last thing to say is you have two Texans who will be on that stage as well. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, their, their, their time may be running out. Beto O'Rourke has been mired at 2 percent or 3 percent in the polls. Julian Castro, very similar position. Uh, a poll that just came out just before we came on air had Julian Castro at 2 percent in Texas. Uh, that is not where you want to be in your home state. So those candidates are going to start to get more and more desperate, and these are going to be their last opportunities, I think, to really change the dynamic. Yeah, one of the things that I think also is interesting is while we do have 10 on stage, there are 10 others who have not dropped out of the race yet. <laughs> Yeah. They're still fighting. Yeah, and, and look, I mean, their campaigns can, can I guess, technically continue, but if they're not on the debates, they're really not, they're, they're sort of going to cease to matter. And I think that's what you're, what you're seeing. I mean, Bill de Blasio is still in, Congressman Tim Ryan is still in. Mm -hmm. Most people don't even know who those people are, let alone know whether they're, they're still in or not. So at some point, they're not going to be able to raise any money. They're not going to have a path to being in future debates. Uh, they're just really not going to be a factor, and their poll numbers are not going to go up either. Yeah, at some point, they have to explain why they're still doing this. I was going to ask you, why are they still doing this? Well, I don't. It's, it's a good question that I don't have a good answer for, right? <laughs> and, and this is part of the problem is now that the debate has gone down to one night and ten candidates, at, at one point you think to yourself, who does this benefit the most? The problem is it doesn't really benefit anybody that most because none of these other people got the 2% to qualify for the debate mm -hmm. in the first place, so it's not like they have a ton of support to throw to any candidate. But to piggyback on what Matt was saying, the race really is crystallizing around four or five candidates, which is actually even a, a, even a smaller amount than I thought at this point would happen. I thought we'd still be looking at seven or eight candidates. Look, you've got Warren, Biden, Sanders, maybe Buttigieg and Harris are still hanging on. Maybe you have a couple of other surprises in there. Uh, but that's really what's happening in this race is coming down to a few candidates and they have a chance to break out and maybe even have their numbers go higher after this debate. You argue that this is going to be a more substantive debate, but mm -hmm. it's still 10 people on the stage at but one time. But it's three hours. Oh the God. last one was uh, I know, three it was, hours. And it was, too, and it was, it was, and it was too long. exhausting. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you'll have more time for substance. Hopefully they get it in in the first 90 minutes when most people are still watching. We'll see what happens after that. Yeah. You know, uh, do you feel like we're really going to see a, a good debate between 10 people on stage, a minute or two to answer questions? Yeah, I mean, part of it depends a little bit on how, they, how the debate is, is managed. Um, you know, the, the Democratic candidates have, you know, want to talk about progressive issues. The, the country's probably looking at a broader range of issues, potentially. Uh, you know, I, I, was, I, was, I noticed over the weekend that uh, on one of the Sunday shows, one of the candidates, was, one of the uh, presidential candidates was talking about how the debt and the deficit haven't come up at, at, at once in one of these debates so far. I mean, that's a major issue that hasn't mm -hmm. come up. So mm -hmm. I do hope it's substantive. I hope that there are differences that, that come forward. We, you know, that, that would, the voters would benefit from that. 
Um, I also just think that, that some of this, you know, some of these plans need to be better explained. How are they going to pay for these things? Uh, Elizabeth Warren wants to end fracking on day one. Well, fracking, uh, you know, is, is actually reducing carbon emissions because natural gas is a very clean energy source. So, you know, sort of throwing out these sort of bumper sticker ideas and not really explaining where the money is coming from or how it would work or how it would affect average citizens, I think uh, we need to see more of that. So what I want to know is, you know, before we, we have to wrap this up soon, tell me the one person you're watching the most and why. Well, Biden, I guess. Uh, look, I think Biden is the one that's under the most pressure. Uh, he, you know, has had some gaps on the trail, which has been something he's done throughout his career. He's obviously getting older. There are questions about his age and his ability to perform. To me, under that pressure, being the front runner in the polls, can he perform at a high level? Can he work within the time limits? Can he deliver an attack? Can he respond? Can he explain his plans? Can he demonstrate vision, but also substance? These are huge questions, and they face him at every single debate, and all the other candidates are desperately hoping that he falls apart so that they can rise. Absolutely. All eyes on Biden, but Ed, is that where your eyes are going to be? You know, I think that my eyes are going to be on Warren, and I think that a lot of other people are watching Elizabeth Warren right now. She has had a great summer. I saw her speak in Iowa. She's speaking today in Austin. She's really starting to get a lot of support that was normally going to a lot of other candidates. And an interesting thing about Warren when she speaks, she doesn't mention Trump that often. Because one important difference between a lot of progressive voters and conservative voters is that for progressive voters, they can't just respond to the negative. They can't just be against something. They also need to be for something. And I think that that is a really important distinction. Warren has really tapped into that. And I think she's been rewarded for it so far. We'll see how it goes tomorrow night. All right, def Thursday, Thursday night. night. It's right. all right, though. You don't rush us. We're not there yet. Of course, it's you guys. It's going to feel like two nights. It is going to feel like two nights. <laughs> you guys are going to be able to watch that debate live right here on KV starting at 7 o'clock on Thursday. I'll be in Houston. I know Ed's going to be in Houston, too. We'll be there, we'll be there yep. uh, watching that debate live. And if you missed any of this interview, we're going to upload it for you onto KV.com right after the newscast. We'll be right back.